back once again with Tight Lines, and this is another episode of Friday Night Neuro. So as you can see, the setup is a little bit different. I'm trying to change things up a bit. Uh, hopefully it looks a little bit cleaner, sounds a little bit better. We're going to keep improving every chance we get, so hopefully you guys come along. So to make sure that you are a part of that, make sure you subscribe down below and get the notification bell on so that, that way you know when we drop the next episode. Also, if you like the video, please throw a thumbs up. Leave a comment, and I hopeful, I'm hopeful that, you know, for this episode, we're going to end up getting some people who are in the same field, so maybe some other people that are dealing with neurodegenerative disorders, and they'll leave their comments down below. So specifically to, on this episode, I want to talk about neurodegenerative disorders. One very particular one that uh, I've put some time and effort into my study, and I know there's plenty of people trying to solve this, this mystery of what it is and how it works. Specifically, I'm talking about Alzheimer's disease. So many of you may have heard of Alzheimer's disease. Um, this is only one of many diseases and, and uh, you know, disorders that we're going to talk about at different points in time on this, this show. But, you know, I just want you to know that this is a very complex disease. Um, it's not the only one, but it is a major one. You know, for a lot of us, it's scary to think about losing the thing that we value the most, which is our mind within ourselves, right? So, you know, I've heard people say before, they're like, yeah, as long as my mind is good, I'm okay. And I think that's where it becomes really frightening to think about what Alzheimer's disease does. So I want to kind of talk to you about what Alzheimer's disease is, what we know about it, what we don't know about it, some of the different hypotheses that are out there, some of the different uh, angles that people take and the opinions people have. You know, I want to clarify some of that because I think it can be really confusing and especially for those of you that might have people that you're taking care of, you know, I think it's important to understand what that person is experiencing, what's really happening in their minds. Um, it might give you a different perspective. So I just kind of want to go through some of that. So that's our target for tonight is talking about Alzheimer's disease. So first of all, what is Alzheimer's disease? So this is a, a neurodegenerative disease where your brain starts to break down essentially. You have neurons, which we talked about that in the last episode. You can check that right up here. Um, so neurons in the brain begin to to degenerate or to die or to go away. Um, and actually, if, you know, if you take someone who is in the advanced stages of Alzheimer's, after death, their brain will actually have shrunk considerably because they've lost so much neuronal volume. So the, the neurons in their brain have actually died to the point where their brain has shrunk physically. Um, it leaves holes in the brain, and then the brain just kind of keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Now, what's really interesting about this disease is that, um, you know, the, the, one of the hallmarks that people most associate, if you've ever been around anybody with Alzheimer's disease, is that they begin to lose these memories from more recently. They don't know who people are. They only remember way back. Um, and that's all part of the, the process. And the reason is because you've got neurons that are dying and it's the newer connections that are dying first and the stronger, longer, you know, way back past memories, those connections have been there for longer and so they are, they're not dying off as quickly. It doesn't mean that they don't die at all. You still have some of that, but it's a lot less than, than the newer stuff. So they kind of go backwards and then the neurons start to die. Um, so what causes that, right? So that's, that's kind of one of the things that I think is, is confusing because people don't really understand. And, and even from a scientific perspective, we don't really know. Um, so th this is probably a point of contention. This is probably going to get a lot of people riled up. I will tell you what, what, what I know and what, what I think and how I feel about it. And then you guys can take this and you, I encourage you go look it up yourself. Go look at the literature that's out there. Go see what I'm talking about. So there's two main hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. So there's two proteins that are involved. There's this stuff called amyloid protein, uh, specifically the beta form of amyloid. So it's called amyloid beta or beta amyloid. And then there's tau and tau protein becomes tangles, but it's both of these proteins are naturally in the system. They have no, normal functions that are not going to make you sick or hurt you. Um, but they can just like anything else, if they're not, working properly, they can hurt you, they can make you sick. Um, so here's what's interesting to me. So I think for anyone that's read about Alzheimer's disease, anybody that has known anybody that has Alzheimer's disease, 
Generally, the way it's discussed is that they have the tau tangles and the, the beta amyloid that becomes plaques, and these two things together are what is killing the neurons and stopping the neurons from working, etc. So I want to kind of clarify that because I don't agree with this. Um, what we know right now from a scientific perspective is that, yes, there is, there is the beta amyloid in this plaque form, and there are, are tau proteins in these tangled forms. We don't understand, A, which one starts first. We don't know, B, why they start. We don't know, C, how they start. We don't know, D, what they actually do from a contribution perspective to this whole process. My opinion is, is that it's, you know, based on the research that I'm aware of and based on the work that I've done, is that this is, this is one piece of it, and I think it's probably helping to accelerate the process of neurodegeneration and memory loss and, and the reducing functionality of neurons, but I don't think it's the cause. Um, one of the reasons I say that is because we know that pharmacologically, so meaning that we can use drugs to go in and we can remove the plaques from the brain. We can remove the tangles from the brain. And in these cases, in human studies and in mouse studies, we're not seeing that that stops the disease or slows it down or reverses it. It doesn't do any of these things, right? So if that was the cause, when you remove that, then that should stop the, the process. But that's not what happens. Um, so there's something else that's driving it. There's something else that's contributing to it. We still don't fully understand it. That's what science is. We, we keep asking questions and testing that to try and understand what exactly is happening. So, so I want to make that very clear is that I'm not saying that they don't exist. I'm saying that I am, am of the mindset um, and, and my perspective on the science is that the science does not support the fact of these two proteins being the cause, um, but I do think it supports that they are, they, they help to catalyze a further degeneration. They, they do help to accelerate it. And I think that that's, that's definitely something that's happening. So what does that mean for diagnosis and treatment? Well, to be clear, Alzheimer's disease cannot be diagnosed as of right now until post-mortem, so after death. Um, and so you can do certain tests to de determine memory, so cognition, sleep, behavior, um, those kinds of things, but those are just symptoms that you can say, yeah, we have a little bit of this, and, and we have a little bit of this, we have a little bit of this, and these things indicate that it might be uh, Alzheimer's disease. Um, but as of right this minute, we do not have the capability to go and say for sure, 100%, you have Alzheimer's disease before you're dead and before an autopsy is done and your brain is actually examined. So you know, keep that in mind when it comes to diagnostics for you, for your family, anything like that. There's no way right now to 100% say that you have Alzheimer's disease. We can say that it's likely, we can say that you have symptoms that are indicative, but it's important to understand what that actually means and doesn't mean. Um, so for diagnostics, nothing right now. That's one of the areas of research that's still super important. Um, so for the treatment, currently there's no treatment that really uh, stops it, slows it down. Um, you know, there's, there are medicines that are used that help to ease symptoms. Uh, so there's, there's really good videos on YouTube. I may link one in the description down below. Um, but what I would say is, is that there, there is, there's a lot happening for people who have Alzheimer's disease because the neurons that are just being destroyed are not just the ones that are involved in memory. So the reality is, is that people who um, are having, you know, the, the, the full on effect of Alzheimer's disease, in a lot of cases, they're hearing things, you know, feeling things, they'll be, um, you know, there could be arthritis involved and, and also it might make it hard to, to feel things the right way to be able to move your fingers properly. Um, makes it hard to see and bright light can bother you and these so there's a lot of different things that can really affect you um, when you have Alzheimer's disease so when somebody's in a bad mood when they have Alzheimer's disease it's probably not because they're they're just an angry human being it's that they're just not in a good place at that point and there's so many different things happening that that's just not good for them so keep that in mind that it's not necessarily you 
Um, you know, even even the whole idea of um, you know, there's there's situations where people who have Alzheimer's disease will wipe themselves with their hands, or they get um, you know poop on them because they just don't know at that point. They're just not aware. Um, they may go wandering. And people say, well, I don't understand how come, you know, this is happening and it's so dangerous. And yeah, but they don't, they don't have that sense. You got to think about, you know, your, the front of your brain, the prefrontal cortex is an area where, uh, everything is processed for decision-making and that gets damaged as well. So those connections that tell you danger, danger, Will Robinson, that's just not there. So you got to think about the whole picture of what's actually happening to that person. So it's scary for them, especially in the beginning. They know something's wrong, but they can't quite put their finger on it. They can't quite understand it. So then that creates anxiety. That incre creates uh, depression. Um, so you can have somebody that's dealing with Alzheimer's as well as a plethora of other things. So I think it's it's really, really important to make sure that you're, you're seeing everything. Um, so pay attention to what somebody's going through. When it comes to to Alzheimer's disease, it's not just a single, you know, one thing that's happening. And I think it's, it's often discussed as, you know, oh, you just lose your memory. And like, that's, that's just part of it. Um, you know, from a research perspective, we're working to understand the cells. We're working to understand the proteins that are underlying it. We're working to understand the genetics that are involved in it. We're working to understand how to diagnose it. Is it something in the blood that we could see that would tell us in advance? Are there behavioral tests that we could do that might possibly give us an idea that, hey, this is somebody that might have either a higher risk or is already showing you know, a behavioral sign, you know, those are things of interest is to try and figure out, is there a way to diagnose it early? Obviously right now we don't have treatment, but at least if you knew in advance, there are things that you could do to really strengthen your brain. So what can you do, right? So that's a good transition into what can you do? So specifically, you could be trying to use all of this stuff that's out there that people are like, oh, do this brain training or do this or do that. What I can tell you is that doing things that engage your brain is healthy, right? That's the best thing you can do. Learn new languages, have new experiences, you know, go experience new things, go do new things. Um, that's the best, learn new stuff constantly. Uh, teach other people. But even, even on top of that, live healthy. You know, if you are living a happy, healthy life, if that's, if that's, really important for your mental health, that's also good for your brain health. And I think sometimes that's that's kind of misunderstood as well, right? So you want to take care of both. So your mental health and your mental well-being and your brain health are really connected. So making sure you're eating well, making sure you're sleeping well, making sure that you're in good environments, making sure that you know, you're not around a bunch of pollution all the time if you can help it, making sure that you're getting out and getting physical and getting blood flowing and you know, getting sunshine. All these things are good for your brain. Um, they're good for your body. They're good for your brain. And, and your brain is connected to everything. So it's taking in stuff constantly. So that's important to understand that realistically, your brain needs to be worked out and it needs to be taken care of just like the rest of your body, right? So, so that's the reality of what the disease is, what we know about it today, what we don't know about it. If you want to know more details, let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on, on Twitter. Let me know what you guys are interested in. I want to give you guys the topics that you're interested in. I want to give you the details that you're interested in. I would love to do some live sessions where I can actually have questions coming in. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, I'd love to be able to do that. Um, you know, definitely I have to set that up in advance and, and try and get the word out there. And hopefully we'll get some more subscribers so that we can continue to go bigger and bigger. Um, hopefully the quality of the videos has gotten better. Um, the sound hopefully is a bit better right now. I would like to think that, that hopefully we can get some more thumbs up on these videos and share them. Please share them with, with other people that you think might be interested or might want to know about this. I want to share it. I want to talk to people about it. I love this topic. And I, if there's something that, that you're specifically wanting to know about that I haven't covered or that you're not sure if I'm going to cover, let me know. Um, so thanks so much, guys, for, for tuning in for another episode. Um, again, I really hope you throw a thumbs up, subscribe, put the notification bell on, share the video, leave a comment, talk to me, let me know what's going on. Thank you so much for your time. 
and I'll see you next time. Tight lines. Thank you.